So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which we'll be taking forward what we did in the last one. That is we implemented mobile net and let's just go ahead and move this from a, just a static image that is just a single image to an actual camera feed. So we can actually, you know, perform object detection in real time. Now, how do we do that? Well, um, first of all, let me just go ahead and add an extension called live server so that you know we guys are on the same page in the last video i just made use of a development php server but if you have vs code you can just go ahead and install this live server and it will be just fine right so let's, let me just go ahead and install this real quick and yep there we are so once we have that what we can do is just click on this go live right here and once we do a nice little page just opens up and there we are right so this is the place where we left last time and now let's just go ahead and continue our model so what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the um, you know the live feed from the camera right so let's just go ahead and do that first of all so what I want to do is let me just go ahead and move everything inside the async path so that I can just get get rid of that ugly semicolon and let me just go ahead and you know switch this to a, a tutorial 5 and all the source code you can find in the description as well um, all right so once we have this let me just go ahead and get rid of all of this right so what we need to do first of all is obviously we need to set up our model first of all right but before even before that what we need is we need a stream of information that is our live camera feed so how do we do that well I'm gonna say I want the navigator media devices now this is just a browser API get user media right and how do we want to get this I don't want to have the audio with me I want the video to be with me but the camera if there are two cameras especially for mobile phones i want the facing mode to be environment now you could have this as the front camera as well as well as the back camera for back camera you need the facing mode to be environment so once you do that now stream now i'm assuming that the user will accept this you you should obviously throw this in a try catch block to check for any errors stream is a raw stream of video right and what we need to do is we need to play this video somehow on the screen so that we can actually see what's going on so I'm gonna go ahead and write video here and give it an ID let's say I don't know just video right and I'm just gonna close this I'm gonna give this an attribute like autoplay muted because well browser these days do not allow auto playing videos if they are not muted right and yeah we should be good to go now what i need to do next is i just need to set the src object of this video to this particular stream and once we do that we should be good to go right so yeah now once we do that and hit save what we should see in the browser is that it it is asking me for the camera access now i don't want to allow it right away because you're going to see my face and you know it's I'm recording on a different screen and I'm, my Mac is on a different screen so it's just gonna blow you away so what I want to do instead is I want to, to I want to use a tool called ncroc right so you can find this tool pretty quickly on ncroc right you can just go ahead and write ncroc.com and you're gonna yeah ncroc.com and download a binary for yourself so what this tool basically does is that it will tunnel your local development port that is a local development server whatever we want to call it to the internet right and uh, once you do that it will give you an url which you can use to go ahead and use it now i could have done it um, through an ip address on the same wi-fi but the thing is this camera api this this um, you know navigator media devices api is only allowed on secure um, HTTPS or on localhost right so it's either localhost or secure sites that is HTTPS so if I just use an IP address 
on my iPhone, then it won't work. So just go ahead and download ngroc and uh, just place it in your, you know, if you're on Windows, just make use of ngroc.exe or if you're on Linux, just place it in user local bin, just, or if you're on Mac as well, just go ahead and place it in there. So once you do that, you should be able to write, write ngroc HTTP and I want to, you know, just forward the port number 5500 over internet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So once I do that, we're going to see the screen and I have this nice little URL with me. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and actually open up my iPhone right here inside my iPhone to paste this URL. And this is the preview for my iPhone. Let me just go ahead and mirror my screen here real quick. So yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and paste this right here. And all right, so once we have that, let me just go ahead and click allow, right? And once you do that, well, okay, so I have to like click the play button, but you know, anyway, we get the screen recording and there we go, an inception, right? So anyway, so once we have this in place, let me just go ahead and uh, make some changes here in the code. So let's just go ahead and what we want to do is we want to set the place inline attribute as well. So I'm going to say this is place, oops, place inline. And once we do that, what should happen is that it should just, you know, play um, within the browser itself, right? Right now what's happening is that it actually takes us through that particular thing. So let's just go ahead and see this again. So yeah, now if I just go ahead and click allow, you can see that we can just see this thing playing inside the browser itself, right? So it does not open in a new screen. So anyway, the deal is that once we have this particular thing right here with us, that is um, our stream right here, now we need to write a method which would actually predict our object whatever we have every single frame right so i'm just going to go ahead and write another method called let's say let's name it predict right so i'm just going to go ahead and why not just write it right here so i'm going to say async predict async function predict right and what we want to do is in this method we want to somehow predict whatever result we have right <clears throat> so essentially what we want to do is we want <clears throat> to get back our that particular code of predictions that is await model dot <clears throat> classify and we want to classify something but again i guess we have lost that particular model so let's just go ahead and bring that model back so i'm just going to go ahead and say that const model is um what what is it await mobile net dot load right and we have mobile net available with us because of this library right here which we are loading and once we have the model available with us what we want to do is we want our stream to be available as well and it would happen eventually when we come to this particular part right so we can just you know go ahead and move this function down there we go Right, so once we have that, what we need to do next is we actually need this predict method to take out the frame of the video which is playing, right? And how do we do that? Well, we make use of canvas for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a canvas here. Let's say it's canvas only, right? And uh, uh, I don't know, let's just go ahead and, you know, pretty much just hide it. I don't know let's see what happens so what i want to do is right here i'm gonna get this canvas is document dot get element by id and once we have that canvas what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the context of this canvas get context get get context and this would be a 2d context right and once we have the context i'm gonna draw draw image I'm going to say this is the video. This is actually the uh, 
actual video and i guess we don't have that video in place with us so let me just go ahead and move this canvas and context outside the function as well and i'm just going to go ahead and create the video tag as well so i'm going to say document.get element by id video there we go right and if you are wondering why it worked in the first place without us having to write this line that is because when you're using id as an attribute and this is just a fun fact i just you know which just came to my mind right now if you're using id as the uh, as the um, you know some sort of very as the some sort of name then this id is automatically assigned a variable name in your javascript so if i have something like div id something right so right here something is a variable and which is defined right and it it is defined to this particular div right which is the name of the id this is something you should just keep in mind so that is why it was working because our variables names and the id selector matches so anyway coming back to machine learning what we have to do next is once we have the canvas with us and let me just go ahead and not really just display null it here but rather you know just give it a width and height so that we can just see on the screen what's happening right so there we are and once we have this i want to draw an image with a x coordinate zero y coordinate zero and a width and a height of 500 right so once we do that now what we could do is last time we were giving it an image tag inside the classifier but what we could do is we could actually give it a canvas element itself so i'm just going to go ahead and throw in the canvas so i want this model to classify what's going on with this canvas and we have already duplicated that particular image from this particular canvas so we are good to go right so yeah and finally let's just go ahead and create a div id status right and let's just get that as well and i'm just going to go ahead and say document dot get element by id status and I'm just going to go ahead and update it right here. I'm going to say inner HTML is, you know, prediction is predictions of zero dot, um, you know, these predictions return us a couple of values. The first one was the actual prediction, which was inside the class name with the probability that is returned in the predictions of zero dot probability right so this is all coming from the last video so if you haven't watched that make sure you do so once we do that we're gonna see that that's pretty much what we need to do right but we need to call this predict function again and again so how do we do that well one way is that we can just you know go ahead and write a set or maybe you know just write predict here predict here recursively which is horrible because this would run a lot of times we don't want an infinite recursive loop secondly what we could do is we could throw in a set timeout <clears throat> maybe which would you know just run render it uh predict predict why is it so hard for vs code today every 16.67 milliseconds which is roughly like 60 fps i guess right or we could make use of the request animation frame API from the browser, which would make sure our animations are running, or basically this loop is running at about 60 uh, frames per second, right? So this is the way we would go about. So once we do that, I'm gonna finally call predict right here. All right, so once we have that in place, let's just see um, if you're missing anything. Okay, so looks good to me so let's just go ahead and move back to the device and let me just go ahead and mirror it again and there we go so once we have that in place we are on the side as well let me just refresh it right here and once we do that we're gonna see that not a lot of stuff is happening here okay let's just go ahead and allow that okay so once we do that we're gonna see that we are getting two feeds now you can see the top one is the video feed because it's you know more responsive and not stretched and the bottom one is uh uh you know 
the canvas feed, which is this particular feed right here. This particular feed in which we are copying the, the current frame of the video, right? And we are requesting this at a 60 FPS or whatever is possible from request animation frame. And the prediction goes right here with a confidence score of this thing. And I don't know how the heck does it uh, think that this is a cache machine or whatever it is, right? So anyway, let's just go ahead and, you know, take a look at our laptop, right? So you can see that if I do that, I guess it does that. It tells us that it's a laptop computer or whatever it is. Let me just go ahead and switch to something which is you know, a little bit dark on screen so that it's able to see it in a better way now i don't know how the hell okay i don't know how the hell does it recognize that as something else but you know you get the idea right if i switch to a monitor let's see it gives us television and you know sometimes it gives us television sometimes it does not but more or less it kind of works right so let's just go ahead and quickly um give it a display none to see what happens so i'm just gonna go ahead and style and just dis display none because we don't really want two feeds playing right away right next to our faces so here we are and uh, let me just go ahead and allow this one more time and there we go so now we just have a single feed with us with a prediction so let's just see let's just see if it is happening correctly or not you know this it recognizes it sometimes as a laptop computer sometimes this does not i don't know how the hell does it look like in a backus to you okay let's just go ahead and google for a hard disk right so that we can just you know give it that and see what happens so this was the photo I used earlier. Let's see if it still recognizes it as a hard disk or not. So you can see that it does recognize this as a hard disk in the prediction with a pretty high confidence score. Right. If we can just scroll it down with an almost 93% confidence score. Maybe we can just you know, go ahead and get some cat photos. Because why the hell not? Right. So let's just go ahead and show it this cat photo and do you think it's a cat okay it thinks it's a monitor well that is technically correct right and uh, maybe there would be a cat somewhere in the uh in the second or third or fourth predictions which we did not see so anyway it's guessing it technically it's guessing it correct it's a website it's an internet site so yeah, maybe you need to just go ahead and look for the third, fourth uh, prediction it's making about the data set, right? So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. And we implemented a bunch of stuff in this one using the MediaNet CNN Convolutional Neural Network. And yeah, that's all for this one. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.